Rutherford informs me that we owe you our thanks. Hadn't intended for you to get involved, but such are the times we live in, huh? I would have done the same for anyone else. You're far too modest, Clive. You'd make a terrible nobleman. But tell me, is the realm truly in as dire a state as Rutherford suggests? From what little I saw, you were right to be worried. Uh, I suppose I should have expected the worst. But I was rather hoping the great and good of the realm might have things a little more under control. Alas, it seems that firm leadership is in short supply these days, and without it, the people are bound to lose their way. We must move quickly. But where do we start? True, the challenges that face us are many. But in my estimation, there are two key areas to be addressed before any other. The realm's armies and her larders. As you've seen firsthand, it's every man and woman for themselves out there. Certain cities have banded together to try and maintain some semblance of order, yes. But such cases are few and far between. And yet, the only remedy for the chaos that faces us is unity. A unity that transcends even the borders laid down by our ancestors. In short, if Storm does not stand together, she will fall apart. But how would one even begin to unite the realm? The armies, my boy. As I told you already, we begin by restoring order among the ranks of those sworn to maintain it. Sadly, I doubt I could convince even the lowliest gaggle of privates to dig a latrine together. But I do know someone the High Commanders have been known to listen to on occasion. Field Marshal Eugen Havel. I thought he was retired. He was, until an Akashic army tore through Randalar and killed most of the rank and file. There is no man alive more capable. Literally. And as luck would have it, I've already spoken with him on the matter. Of course you have. And he's agreed to help. On one condition. That he first speaks with you personally. Havel has always been a man of frustratingly rigid principle. And he has certain qualms about clasping arms with... Well, with an outlaw. I extolled your many virtues as best I could, of course. But the old goat was adamant that he be allowed to appraise you in person. He don't mind, do you, my boy? Of course not. As long as chaos reigns, we will never build a better world. I'll do whatever it takes. And if the Field Marshal wishes to speak with me in person, then so be it. That's the spirit. I'll leave for Randalar at once. Would you send a Stolas? Of course. Rutherford is already in the Dalmechian capital. I'll have him tell Havel to expect you forthwith. Excellent. Thank you, Uncle. No. Thank you, Clive. Papa? What is it? Oh, please. I'm scared. Yeah! Coats and cowards, the lot of you! If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you shall have! 
Allow me. I don't need your... Please, uh, Field Marshal. Oblige him. This won't take long. You're right. It won't. Men, finish him. A little longer than I'd have liked. Field Marshal Havel, I presume. Are either of you injured? No, my lord. You arrived just as our escort turned on us. Fucking traitors! I'd heard reports of soldiers in the outlying regions abandoning the oaths they swore. But I hadn't thought the corruption had reached so close to the heart of the Republic. It's a fucking disgrace. Your interfering old bastard of an uncle tried to warn me, of course. My Lord Marquis, or is Sid the outlaw more to your liking? Call me what you want. It doesn't change who I am, or the urgency of the message I bring. My uncle has a plan to right the realm, and he needs your help to see it through. Before I agree to anything, I'd have you answer one question. What do you stand to gain from all this? I won't deny that I might benefit from further chaos. But I seek a new beginning for all of us. And while the choices I've made may not always have been the right ones, I know I made them for the right reasons. For so long, so many of us have been told how we could live, how we could die, when it should have been our decision all along. Now we have a chance to put things right. But in order to take it, we must stand together even if it be beside those with whom we don't see eye to eye. Certainly not the words I expected from an outlaw. But perhaps your uncle was right. You are no ordinary outlaw. I'll never hear the end of this. All right. I'll start by ordering my most trusted guard to bring the Dalmechian fringes under control. Next, I'll make contact with my counterparts in the Imperial Army and see if I can't convince them to try and restore order in their own territory. Thank you, Field Marshal. But they are not the only ones we will need to convince. What do you mean? I don't doubt that I can bully some sense into a few generals. But those they answer to require a different kind of persuasion. And when it comes to honeyed words, well, we will need an envoy. One who can court even the most stubborn of statesmen. You, perhaps. I'm flattered. But I'm no diplomat either. And I have other problems to attend to. What we need is a skilled arbitrator. And I may know just the person. Is that so? And would he happen to be an outlaw, too? Of a different kind, perhaps. Well, beggars can't be choosers. I suppose we'll all have to find a little of the outlaw on ourselves if we're to make it through this. Very well. Send your man to me right away. I shall. Uh, my Lord Marquis, your Lord Uncle bade me escort the Field Marshal to his manor in Port Isolde. And I will see that my associate joins you there.
Very good, my lord. Huh. An envoy. I'm not sure I'm the man to talk anyone round. I can barely convince my brother to take his medicine. No. This is a job for someone with experience. Someone like Quinton. I hope I can convince him at least. No need to write from here. Quinton, I have a proposal for you. Do you now? Something tells me you'll be asking more of me than a cask of Gotand gold. Go on then. Propose. You'd have me convince the chiefs and chamberlains of the realm that they should simply swallow their pride and do the one thing that has proved impossible for thousands of years. Was there anything else? Perhaps I can fetch you a meat pie as well. I know it's a lot to ask, but I can think of none better suited to the role. And you'd have me give up what little I have left to do it. I told you, Clive. The people of Lost Wing are my family, and I cannot abandon them. You'll have to find someone else. I'm sorry to hear that. So am I. And why might that be? What he's asking? How is it any different to what you've done so far? They want you to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. That's what you do best. <laughs> if it's the vineyard you're worried about, we'll see that the grapes are picked and the tons filled. You know we will. It's not that. Then what is it? You said yourself we're family. Don't you trust us? You know that's not what I'm... Then what are you saying? that only we are worth saving. Why turn your back on everyone else? You convinced us we could build new lives for ourselves, and if you can do that, who's to say you couldn't convince the entire realm? A stirring argument. I fear that any rejoinder I make might fall somewhat flat by comparison. So you'll join us? <sighs> Where do you need me? Field Marshal Havel will want to speak with you in person. He's currently in Port Isolde. I can arrange for a party of curse breakers to accompany you there. That would be very much appreciated. I hear the roads are far from safe these days. <laughs> Hopefully not for long. My uncle will want to know that his plan is taking shape. Bring good news. The Field Marshal has agreed to your plan. Ha! Of course he has! I didn't doubt you for a moment, dear boy. Rutherford is accompanying him back to your manor in Port Azolder as we speak. They will await your return there. As will one other. One other? Who, exactly? Lord Havel was concerned that even if he could get the realm's armies to agree to an accord, he might not be as successful in convincing those with political power. He asked if I might have a solution. And I suggested a certain Imperial Lord Magistrate turned Liberator. One of your co-conspirators? 
Master Quinton would probably call me one of his. But yes. Another outlaw, then. Just the thing we need to put these rotten politicos in their places. Good thinking, Clive. I'm glad you approve. The more the merrier, eh? Uncle. Assuming Havel and Quinton can solve our problem with the armies, you still haven't mentioned how we might manage the grain shortages. Oh, don't you worry, my boy. The seven high houses will be seeing to that. They have all agreed to make the most generous of donations. Oh, of course, it did take a little persuasion, but luckily I had some unexpected help. From who? Why, you, my boy. Rumor has it that you rescued the Lady Ariane's head steward, Rockford, from a horde of bloodthirsty bandits. It was more of a handful. Well, the old battle axe was so pleased. She had a shipload of talents delivered to my private docks by the next new moon. And when the other houses saw the parsimonious old crone's purse strings finally loosen, they as good as tripped over themselves in the rush to follow suit. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Now, I must be getting back to the manor. Join us there at your earliest convenience, would you? Of course, Uncle. And how, pray tell, will we get that grain to the capital if the roads are still overrun with Akashic? You'll find another bloody road. I only have so many men, and I'm not about to send them headlong into an ether flood. That is, unless you'd have them turn as well. Well, I'd certainly eat less. <laughs> Says the man with a belly bigger than a band of curls. My soldiers actually need their rations. Without any food to keep them going, they'll be dead even before you've sent them on your fool's errand. <clears throat> if I may, gentlemen, perhaps I might suggest an alternative approach. Though supply routes are indeed disrupted, there is no shortage of ships. Indeed, they bob away in every bay from here to Randalar, awaiting a safe haven. Allow them to make port and fill their bellies full of grain. And once those who crowd the cities are fed, ferry the displaced back to the countryside to work the fallow fields. Ah, but I'm sure that you wish to continue your discussion. Forgive the interruption. Two such firm friends as yourselves need no help from the likes of me. Rutherford spoke fondly of the great bond between you. Us? Friends? I can't stand the man! Clive, I'm beginning to question the quality of the company you keep. And what kind of company are you expecting him to keep? The man's a criminal! Criminal? How? How? dare you! You are not fit to breathe the same air as this fine, upstanding young gentleman. Upstanding? He calls himself Sid the Bloody Outlaw! Once more unto the breach. <sighs> Shall we begin again? What we seek here is not to create a new nation nor to claim the thrones of those that already exist. We wish simply to bring stability to the realm that mankind might weather the current storm. And to do that, we must convince those in power, the generals, the statesmen, the nobles, that our cause is just. There will be disagreements, yes. And I imagine some resistance, much resistance. But we cannot let that deter us. If we show them the path, Show them that we walk it ourselves, then I am confident they will follow. The fate of the world lies in my nephew's hands, but the well-being of her people lies in ours, and we must not squander the chance that Clive has given us. Uncle Byron, I... Now, with that settled, let's move on to the signing of the Accord. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? <clears throat> Citizens of Valisthea, I present to you the Triunity. Rutherford, my quill.
Well, my boy, the stage is set. That it is. This is the role you were born for. Now I ask only that you trust in the talents of your supporting cast. We shall play our parts to the best of our abilities, that you might have the opportunity to shine. The realm needs its Sir Crandall. And there is no better Crandall than you, Clive. I uh, want you to keep this signed accord as proof of our faith in you. I will. Thank you, Uncle. It's usually me making demands of Hippocrates. I wonder what this is about. If Joshua was worried about Jill, I should go and speak with him. Hippocrates, I received your note. Ah, yes. I expect you're wondering what this is all about. <laughs> you spoke of making amends with Dion, but I can't imagine what for. Then I should begin by telling you that I was once his tutor. This was some years ago, of course, before I joined Sid in his hideaway. At that time, I was counted among the foremost scholars of Oriflam and was accordingly invited to the palace to supervise the young prince's education, all to ensure that the future emperor had a firm grounding in, well, everything an emperor should. History, religion, commerce, government. Alas, our time together was cut short when Dion left to join the dragoons. His study is no longer being deemed necessary. I had not expected to meet with him again, Least of all here. Have you spoken with him? No, I... I have yet to find the right moment. His Highness always seems so preoccupied, especially when alone. I would not wish to disturb his ruminations with idle words of greeting. Not when I know he dwells upon the evil Ultima had him commit in the Dominion. The guilt weighs heavily on him, I know. But as you say, that was Ultima's doing. Surely you can't blame yourself. When I first met him, it was not guilt, but his people's expectations that weighed heavily upon him. And I did nothing to ease that burden. He bore it alone. Until the day he could not bear it any longer. It is one of my greatest regrets that I only ever offered him my wisdom when what he truly needed was friendship. The blame for Dion's transgressions lies not only on his shoulders, but on mine. I see. I'm ready to help you in any way that I can. Then I beg that you bring me a wild wyvern tale. Apothecaries across the ages agree that even to glimpse such a flower is to be granted inner solace. Fabulists and fraudsters all, of course. But there is oft a seed of truth to be found where even the most outlandish opinions align. Well, it can't hurt to try. Where can I find this flower? And how will I know it? You have seen cultivated wyvern tales before, I trust. The lily-white blossoms from whose roots the poisonous ink for the brand is distilled. Well, those which grow in the wild differ only in their purple hue. 
The harsher the environment in which they are raised, the deeper the colour. There is a waterfall in Rickmow's Roost across the strait, where the flowers once grew in abundance. Whether they still survive there, I know not. But try as I might, I can find no likelier location. It's all right. I'll find you a wife and tail one way or another. Thank you, Clive. And please, be safe. for a bunch, I suppose. found the flowers you were looking for. You did? I think I did. <sighs> you did indeed. My dear boy, thank you. You wanted to make Dion a gift of one, did you not? Shall I invite him to join us? Oh, uh, I don't... It's no trouble. I'll go and fetch him. Time then. No, only to the shelves. 
Our lawsman has something he'd like to give you. Master Harpocrates. No. I dare not show my face before him. Not after everything I have done. I have taken countless innocent lives. And ruined countless more. All because I was weak. I have sworn to atone for my crimes or die in the attempt. But were I to meet with him again, and see in his eyes what I have become, I fear that my resolve might falter. And that is all the more reason to do it. Test your resolve. Prove to yourself and to him how strong it truly is. Very well, then. Take me to him. Follow me. Even now, I hesitate to approach him. What must he think of me? You'd be surprised. Master Harpocrates, pray, accept my apologies for leaving your tutelage before my studies were complete. Your lessons opened my mind to a world quite unlike the one I had imagined from within the gilded confines of the palace. And I shall be forever grateful for the efforts you made to enlighten me. Lift up your head, your highness. The deeds of youth require no apology. That you took the time to visit me says much about the man you have become. Now, there is something I would like to show you. Is that a wyvern tale? The color is unfamiliar to me. Because it is unique to those found in the wild. Something in the harsh environments in which they grow lends them this striking hue. Their roots are indistinguishable from those of their hothouse cousins. But once they bloom, the difference is immediately apparent. In this flower, I see you, your highness. Its roots were the roots of a wyvern tail, with all that implies. But they do not define it, just as yours do not define you. I want you to have it, that it might remind you of this truth. Master Harpocrates. I would ask of you a service. Keep your gift until I have fulfilled my duty to the realm, for only then shall I be deserving of it. As you wish, Your Highness, I shall await your return.
Our roots do not define us. No wonder my stepmother didn't like him. For reuniting me with memories I had thought long lost. I shall not forget this. Thank you, Clive. Were it not for you, I fear I might never have found the right moment to speak with him. Not to mention the wives and tales. I shall plant their seeds, that I might not disappoint His Highness upon his return. I hope the soul in the hideaway is to their liking. Why, these flowers bloomed in the bleak, black wastes of Walud. I'm sure Nigel's yard will suit them to a team. <sighs> when it comes to expressing one's gratitude, I find that words are seldom sufficient. Here. What's this? A Stola's quill. Or more precisely, my Stola's quill. It is said that an owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. So consider this my wish for you. That one day you may put down your sword and pick up that pen. Well, when that day comes... I'll certainly have a lot to write about. Thank you, Harpocrates. It shall have pride of place in my chamber. Joshua, I read your message. You're right. Jill is different. I don't think I'd realized how different, but since we've returned from Drake's spine, I've felt it more and more. I suppose it's not hard to imagine why. She doesn't think she belongs anymore. And that's why we need to remind her she is still one of us. To let her know that we still need her. Now more than ever, that you still need her. But how to do that? When last we were truly close, we were but children. Of course. Do you remember the time we accompanied Father on his annual tour of the Duchy? And Jill and I broke from the procession to ride up Man's Hill? To see the snow daisies, I remember. It was the first time Father had allowed us to join him. And when he realized you were missing, he had the entire retinue down to the pop boys combing the countryside. In the rain. A thunderstorm forced us to take refuge in a grove of oaks before we'd even made it halfway there. It was the Lord Commander who finally found us, and needless to say, he was none too pleased. And then it seems you and Jill have unfinished business. What do you say? Man's Hill. It's not that far. True. Though I suspect it is also much changed. Little in southern Rosaria remains as it was when we were children. You're saying I should go and scout the area for bandits? <laughs> I'm saying we should first go and see if there are actually still any snow daisies left. <laughs> what would you do without me, Clive?
Come on. Gah! This is the place, but... I'm sorry, Clive. There's no weapon spared. What do we do now? We keep looking. Man's Hill cannot be the only place where snow daisies grow. Perhaps, but... It's the only place I know of. You, of. Then why not ask someone who might know of another? Someone at the backyard. To the hideaway, then. Let's hope one of the gardeners knows where to find snow daisies. Say what you will. Oh, what brings you down from the heavens, Sid? I need your advice. Joshua and I are looking for a place where snow daisies grow, preferably in abundance. Snow daisies. Then you'll want somewhere not too hot and not too cold. And where the winds are strong enough to carry the seeds. Uh, I reckon Man's Hill would be a good place to start. There in the Royal Meadows, perhaps? Both have similar climbs and the right elevation. If the Blight hasn't claimed them yet. Right. Thank you. Did you learn where we might find our flowers? The gardener here mentioned the Royal Meadows in Sambrak. Ah, the fields beyond Northridge. Well, if that's the case, then Yote was right. I recall that she kept the record of our travels, you see. So I asked her if she'd perhaps noted anywhere that snow daisies grew, and she mentioned Oilerfeist Bay. Whose shores border the meadows. Off we go, then. and is threatening to pull their sentries from market. I would speak with this Jew. I saw the captain just now. Hang the Jew. the coastline. We can start there. Be safe. Ugh. 
Expected. But found her. It was worth it. They're beautiful. Do you think Jill will like them? She'll love them. Come on. Let's go. It appears my work is done. The rest, as they say, is up to you. Well, you and the skies. We wouldn't want another thunderstorm now, would we? to show you. There is? And where might this something be? It's, uh, not here. Now, I know this is sudden, but how would you fancy a trip to Oriflam? There are so many. This is what you wanted to show me. I, I, I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. The smile on your face is enough. We've been worried about you, Joshua and I. You remember when I took you to Man's Hill? Or... Oh. Tried to. How could I forget? You saw me crying and thought a change of scenery might lift my spirits. In the end, it earned me a nasty cough and a stern scolding from your mother. But I felt wonderful nonetheless. I'm sorry. I had no idea what I was getting us both into. But I couldn't bear to see you like that. Before we left, my chambermaid told me she'd overheard your mother talking about my marriage prospects with some of the noblewomen at court. They were debating whether it would be more profitable to marry me off to one of the high houses instead of saving me for the ducal line. No one thought to ask me what I wanted. I was nothing to them. A pawn at best. I felt so trapped. So lonely. I didn't know. But I wasn't alone. You were there. Your hand in mine as we ran for those oaks. And I knew then, no matter what happened, I would be all right. I'll never forget that feeling. Before we broke camp, 
the morning after the storm. Do you know what I did? No. What? I slipped away from my governess to climb the tour. And from there I saw a sea of petals all reaching for the sun. And I realized that no matter how terrible the night, dawn would always come. That you, that you would always come for me. And you have, again and again. Where do you see us? Where all this is over? Don't know. Not here, though. I think I've outgrown the twins. After everything we've been through, the realm just seems so small. I'll need some space to spread my wings. Then. That's what you'll have. And I'll stop at nothing to see that you do. I never was much good at garlands. But it'll have to do. Treasure it forever. Thank you, Clive. For this, the flowers, for everything. It's exactly what I needed. You are my treasure. We should probably be getting back. I expect the others are wondering where we are. You're right. There's still much to do. And we'll do it together. <laughs>